I'd like to call the 26th <coughs> regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Though no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Thank you for that thought. Uh, please call the roll. There are 16 present. Alderperson uh, Andrew Schneider is with us on remote, and Alderperson John Bellinger is not excused. There are 15 present. Sorry about that. Uh, next, just please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last Common Council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to public forum. I'll turn it over to the city clerk. Thank you. We have five this evening. The first one is John Dolson. Hello. Hi, can you state your name and address for me, please? Jonathan Dolson, 409 New York Avenue. Thank you, you'll have five minutes. Thank you. We have a lot of resources in our community like the Wild Center and New City Green Space downtown that bring the community together. And the more we can invest in and create those kinds of spaces in our area, the better. It brings more life and excitement to the community and gives people a sense of ownership in their community spaces. Gina, age 34. <clears throat> Sheboygan has a great entertainment venue, uh, but they aren't large enough to bring in the more popular acts. People are willing to go to Milwaukee or even Chicago to see their favorite bands or shows in standing room only venues, and they make a night or weekend of it. It would be great to take that weekend of money and time spent elsewhere and keep it local. <coughs> Brad, 32. Growing up in Sheboygan, the Armory has always held strong, happy memories for my family and me. The thought of demolishing the building is quite depressing. I believe the proposal to turn the armory into a community and civic center is a wonderful, well thought out idea. We will, be, we will be able to keep the history of the building, provide a space for community to gather, and add life to the lakefront, all while generating revenue. It's the best, best of both worlds for our community. Olivia, age 32. The armory is a major historical piece of Sheboygan. Although today it is unused and vacant, through many years, it brought our community together through its wonderful events. I find it important to revitalize the building and use it to its full potential. By turning the armory into a community and civic center, we are allowing Sheboygan as a whole to come together again, as well as providing our visitors and newcomers a place where they can feel a part of our community. Let's not forget that it sits in our beautiful lakefront and will not go unseen or unused. Gracia, age 26. Tearing down a statement of what Sheboygan used to be for apartments in no way strengthens our community. We need to have places where we can once again build our community instead of just adding more apartments on the Armory site. Jason, age 28. The Armory Project ties Sheboygan's past with the future. The Armory is an iconic building that has meant a great deal to generations of Sheboyganites. This project adds 40 apartments and preserves the building while providing a community center <coughs> for entertainment and innovation that will make Sheboygan more attractive for millennials. It's a win-win. Kyle, 25. We have an opportunity to accentuate Sheboygan as a destination while also preserving an historic building. People who would travel for conferences, shows, et cetera, need places to eat, shop, and lodge. I think this space would add to already successful businesses. Janine, 26. Why not build up a community center or venue for events that will attract people and grow our local businesses here? We could do bigger events, trade shows, job fairs. The sky is the limit of opportunity. Brian, 28. 
The armory is a staple of our community. No matter how much disrepair it may be in at the current time, this is a group of community members gung-ho on saving it. It'd be a shame to overlook their passion and drive. They also aren't the first group to voice this opinion, which should tell you how important this is. Sheboygan does not have a good history of preserving historical sites, and this is a great big one that will actually benefit the community, not just sit there. You don't know that something won't work unless you give it a try. Bailey, 28. You can always build apartments. Why not take advantage to do something that will make people want to come and stay in Sheboygan? Annie, 27. There are countless uh, quotes like this from the millennials. Many of them don't like being called millennials. The ages 25 to 40, if we want them to stay, we need to give them something to do. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Joanne Scribner. <clears throat> Could you please state your name and address for us? Joanne Scribner, 3 Seneca Trail, Sheboygan. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. State of the Sheboygan Auditorium and Armory. It seems like the mayor, the city administrator, and some of you people in city development and planning, and some of you people in the Department of Public Works, and some of you people in finance, and some of you older persons, do not want to save the historic Sheboygan Municipal Auditorium and Armory. You don't seem to care about historical buildings and historical sites in Sheboygan. You want to tear them down. You want to build another big apartment complex that the average Sheboygan citizen cannot afford to rent. $1,000 to $1,600 a month, seriously? You want to ram your agenda down our throats. You don't care what the citizens of Sheboygan want. If you cared, you would put the issue of saving the Sheboygan Municipal Auditorium and Armory on a ballot, on a referendum, for the citizens of Sheboygan to vote on. What's next for your wrecking ball and destruction of Sheboygan history? The Sheboygan Press Building, built in, I think, 1905. That's the year my dad was born. I believe WHBL Radio started in the lunchroom on the second floor of the Sheboygan Press at 632 Center Avenue. My cousin, University of Madison graduate and Plymouth High School graduate, Bob Joslin, was a reporter and city editor of the Sheboygan Press. I was probably one of the world's oldest paper carriers for the Sheboygan Press at age 42. Then I became a city representative and district manager, and I hired, trained, and fired paper carriers age 12 and up. I had some excellent 12-year-old paper carriers for the Sheboygan Press who are outstanding adults today. The Wednesday, March 21st meeting, the meeting where K. L. Amin, co-founder of the Milwaukee real estate development from Scott, uh, the firm Scott Crawford Incorporated, spoke before city leaders. Did Jennifer Lurkey, president of the Armory Community Project, a group be behind uh, efforts to restore the Armory, did Jennifer get proper and timely notification of that meeting so she could speak? Discrepancy there. Check out your Saturday, April 7 edition of the Sheboygan Press with a headline that says, Armory Proponent Disputes, City Leader Statement. What are the credentials of the Scott Crawford Incorporated Development firm? I've heard more than one city alder person voice doubts about that firm. Where's the proof of quality in their apartment buildings and their projects that they build? Jennifer Lurkey, Dane Schaefer, Travis Gross, and Bill Thiel, among other citizens of Sheboygan, want to save the Sheboygan Auditorium and Armory. They have great ideas and plans in place to turn the Armory into a modern public convention center and business incubator. <coughs> Rosemary Trester and Scott Lewandowski want to save the Sheboygan Armory. If only there were more kind-hearted alder persons like Scott and Rosemary on the Sheboygan Common Council. <coughs> oh, I know you've got some kind hearts in here, but eh, those two are, I think, special. 
Thank you so much, Scott and Rosemary, for your hard and dedicated work at Sheboygan All the Persons. I appreciate both of you so much. Praying for you, Scott. Praying for you, Rosemary. Praying for all of you, actually. Now, let's just go down memory lane. Bill Wangaman, Sheboygan City historian, remember him? Used to be an older person here. Let's see, how do we start here? Uh, I've got like 46 pages. Do I, how much time do I have left? Not that much. <laughs> okay, so it was, um, it was in 1942, I believe, that, uh, it was actually 1940, May thir March 13, 1940, Sheboygan Common Council resolution submitted for construction of the armory. March 19 of 1940, Sheboygan Common Council approves plans to build the Sheboygan Armory and Auditorium. March 23rd of 1940, the total cost of the armory is, armory is projected to be 204,000. 154,000 of this is to be covered by a grant from the federal WPA project. May 1 of 1941, cornerstone laying cer ceremony followed by a parade. May 22nd through 24th, 1942, the grand opening featuring the Mammoth Olympia Indoor Circus sponsored by Sheboygan Baseball Association. May 11th of 42, the first North Central High School graduation ceremony held at the Armory, 584 total graduates. July 4th, 1942, Armory dedicated on the 4th of July. Excuse me, Joanne, your time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Save the Armory, please. Dane Schaefer. State your name and address for me, please. Dane Schaefer, 3728 South 13th Street. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. I started my first business, a hookah bar, at the age of 21. At that time, very few people in this area knew what that was, and less thought there was any market for it. To start it, I took a $20,000 SBA loan. For approval, the lender understandably required my father co-sign. I'll never forget one detail of that process. One day, the branch manager said to my father, tell your, kid, tell your kid we'll give him the money, but when he fails, just remember that you're on the hook for it. I will always believe that person is an unprofessional jerk, but I don't fault him for being skeptical. Yet the bank had protected itself from my potential failure, and I received the loan. Three years later, my business was nearly debt-free, and my original lease was up. With my new bank, I took 70000 in loans to purchase and renovate a building that had sat unused and in disrepair for years. The Epicure Lounge still operates profitably out of that location at 1116 Michigan Avenue and will celebrate 12 years in business in September. <clears throat> I know my business is, in the grand scheme of things, small potatoes. Since opening, however, this is how much I put into this. I'm crying right now. And <sighs> I know my business is, in the grand scheme of things, small potatoes. Since opening, however, it has brought a little more culture to our city and offered something that has made many young adults a little happier to live here and even employed some of them. It has paid sales, property, payroll, and excise taxes. It's hired local contractors and bought goods and supplies from area vendors and cleaned up a vacant eyesore on Michigan Avenue. If the original lender had decided that despite being protected from my failure, they couldn't grant the loan because they knew I was going to fail, None of it would have been possible. For that, I have respect for the lender. It would be very easy to predict that something isn't viable and then confirm the prediction by denying the other party the ability to prove themselves. The developer agreement is your co-signature with many opportunities for the city to reclaim the property should we fail to meet the negotiated milestones. In this case, however, the potential return on investment is far greater than the interest that lender earned. The city will realize taxes from the development of the lot behind the building, our two commercial rentals, and from our organization's $10,000 annual pilot or payment in lieu of taxes. There will be sales taxes from events, rentals, and 
and commercial leaseholders. The $5.9 million renovation will also be a great boost for the local economy. The positive impact the Armory will have on the community is invaluable. Sheboygan employers have struggled recruiting and retaining members of the largest generation in the workforce, millennials. The most perplexing part watching the city try to find a solution to this dilemma is often whose ideas are considered valid and whose aren't. What we are offering is a giant leap towards making this a more appealing place for this demographic to call home. Besides young professionals and young families, the Armory and its programming will be accessible and appealing to residents and visitors of all ages and backgrounds. We are offering a place that will maintain the lively community we have during summer year round. Okay, I can make it. <laughs> Throughout this process, I feel the experience of the members of our organization has often been overlooked. Besides the Epicure Lounge, my wife and I own and lease a commercial property in Sheboygan. While my parents have recently allowed me to spend an absurd amount of time, of their time on this project, I have continued to work for them full time at Legendaries. <clears throat> During this project, I was a producer for 10 of Charlie Barron's sold out comedy shows throughout the state, including those at the Weill Center. I am the current chair of one of Sheboygan Press's people or groups of 2017 Sheboygan Soup, which among other things, maybe not, <laughs> which among other things has been working hard to plan next week Monday's event at Three Sheeps. I'm a founding member of Reboot Sheboygan and have continued working with the group to refurbish computers for local nonprofits and people in need. Most importantly, I am a husband and a father of two beautiful boys, one of which who was born only days, uh, days after this whole thing started. There are six other people on our board that have unique but sim similarly impressive backgrounds that have dedicated a lot to getting us to this point. We have pursued this with no benefit to us besides the fact that we believe it is the best path forward for Sheboygan. We have met and overcome every obstacle and expectation that has been placed in our way on very short timelines. I would not have put this much amount, uh, the me. amount of time and effort, money and resources that I have while juggling everything else if I didn't believe this plan is viable. I'm asking for you to recognize that we are a group of intelligent and experienced people that have proven we deserve this opportunity. We're offering our resources and risking our reputations to make Sheboygan a more vibrant community and only asking for the opportunity to do so. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Dan Shekalinski. I do. <laughs> Can you state your name and address for me, please? Sure. Dane Chekolinski, 3217 West Apache. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for all the support the city has given Sheboygan and economic development. What got me personally excited about saving the armor is the sheer size and potential of the building as an events venue. However, soon realized that Sheboygan North and South boast field houses capable of holding 3,000 spectators, the same capacity as the Armory, and are among the largest field houses in Wisconsin. Not only are our field houses enormous, but they're also rarely used. Any one of us can host a major event at cost by contacting the SASD Recreational Department. In recent memory, South hosted the Bernie Sanders Presidential Rally, fulfilling a major role the Armory once had played. School district administrators have consistently stated that public and social events are of a high priority and will bump other activities, save a sport competition. This policy of community first remains in effect today. After I take away the size argument, there's only one thing that is stuck in my head, and that is the opportunity cost. I've talked with my board of directors about the need to construct at least 80 more single family homes per year. One board member, ex one board member expressed apprehension, uh, and they thought that this goal was ambitious. We, after we talked to the meeting, I asked the question, what is 80 homes going to do when we have 3,000 open jobs? It was that moment when my board member realized that building merely 80 homes a year is like trying to drain a pond with a five-gallon bucket. I'm afraid we all vastly underestimated the housing crisis. And if we started building housing five years ago, perhaps we wouldn't have lost Mayline. A great start to our housing has been the addition of new apartments, but by far the biggest criticism is that they are not widely affordable. Only the Scott Crawford proposal includes workforce housing, which ensures units are available to those at lower incomes while simultaneously subsidizing rent in a highly desirable location along Lake Michigan. 
In addition, no recently built apartments include three-bedroom units for families. Crawford's proposal contains several dozen rentable townhomes, kickstarting a new housing development product requested by relocating families. The financial benefits of the cities are worlds apart. The estimated annual property tax is $370,000 for Crawford's and approximately $100,000 for the Army Project, a difference of over a quarter million dollars a year. Choosing Crawford's proposal puts $4 million more in a 20-year TID without the need to expand water or sewer. The project builds exactly what Sheboygan needs financially, property tax density. Public, low-cost, family-friendly events are indeed needed. I have been impressed with the city's initiative to create a new city green events venue and creating a calendar events with almost no budget. Consider this. Due to the low um, incentive ask by Crawford deal, the city would have the funds and it did to put at least $100,000 annually to sponsor family-friendly public events for a generation. You would have the opportunity to get both affordable housing and low-cost entertainment for Sheboygan's working family by choosing the Crawford's deal. The SCDC leadership must lend its support to the Crawford proposal because of the quarter million dollar annual tax difference. The plan includes affordable housing. It is the first project to include rentable townhomes for families, and the community has already passed a $32 million referendum to create not one, but two spectator public event spaces. At no point does our support of the Crawford diminish our healthy respect for the Armory Project's ideas. Contrary to what the foundation would have you believe, um, by voting to demolish the building, you are not the bad guy. You are doing exactly what the community, or you're not doing exactly what the community doesn't want. 18,000 people during the 2004 November presidential election voted to not only replace the armory, but agreed to have their property taxes raised to do so. That's 18,000 voters who agreed to pay additional property taxes not to have their sporting events held at the armory. That number, now, it is well in your power to turn this tired asset into an annual tax annuity of over $370,000 so that our community may continue to grow and thrive. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sally Carson. Sally Carson, 320 Lincoln Ave, Sheboygan. Thank you, you'll have five minutes. Thank you for giving us time to speak this evening. We are hopeful that the elders will take into consideration the people of Sheboygan's wishes and the benefits restoring the armory will have to the quality of life of the people of the city. Once upon a time, we heard how the building was in disrepair, which has been confirmed by a local contractor that it's built like a brick shit house and isn't as bad as we've been told. Every time the elders say that the building is in disrepair, it hurts our cause immensely. If we can rehab the Weill Center, we can rehab the Armory. The Armory Project has found a solution for each problem the council has put in front of us. Some elders had concerns about our business plan, and hopefully we've addressed those concerns. Our business plan is sound, thought out, and shows that we, what we intend. It is up to us to make it a reality. Focus on what we can bring to the table in terms of the quality of life in Sheboygan. So what does that look like for young professionals that we want to bring to our community? They are the learners and the innovators. They want well-rounded life with entertainment and opportunity. They want nearby options so they don't have to increase their carbon footprint evidenced by the addition of bike paths around the city these past few years. They want a place where they can support their community and the people in it we have an opportunity to create that space for them. I wanna take a minute to talk about one idea that didn't make it to the business plan because of timing reasons. Larger maker fairs take place in cities like Chicago and New York. In between these larger maker fairs, smaller cities host mini maker fairs. There's three tiers of mini maker fairs, small, medium, and large. We would be able to host the larger of the maker fairs and the armory and bring makers from Green Bay, Milwaukee, Chicago, that's 2,500 to 6,000, that would come to Sheboygan and increase our revenue. We have growing maker movement in the community, why not make it that much better by hosting it at the armory? Another item that did get into the business plan that I'd like to talk about are craft fairs. 
Handmade movement is growing with a desire for young people to spend their money on one-of-a-kind quality local handmade goods. Here. We could be the next to host shows like Art vs. Craft Milwaukee. They had 90 vendor spots and 350 artists that would apply. Admission was $5. They need, the, there's need for this type of a show in Sheboygan. Bring these designers and doers and makers together under the roof of the armory for a weekend in the winter and give everyone something to look forward to midway through February or March. Why can't we be the place to go for these type of events? Cedar Brook draws so many people for their strawberry festival that there's times when people are shoulder to shoulder and can't get through. An estimated 100,000 people. Why isn't that a win-win for us and the businesses around us? As for bands coming to Sheboygan, local isn't the issue. The venue is. We're giving them a space for bands to perform, and when it comes to where a band will perform, the size of the city doesn't matter as much as the size of the venue. I saw Dave Matthews in Saratoga Springs, New York. Population there is 30,000. Why wouldn't a band come to Sheboygan? They can. The fact is that our plan is multifaceted and can't be broke down into if this part of the plan does or doesn't work. We have planned for very types, varied types of income streams so that if one falters for the moment, we are not caught without any means of paying the bills. We have proven that we are motivated and innovative, innovative enough to figure out other opportunities if one doesn't pan out the way we expect. But in all honesty, with the types of inquiries we've gotten, I'm not worried about any part of our plan. We have already been approached by multiple people in the community about utilizing the building for events. There's a great need for this type of space we're offering in Sheboygan. As for the apartments, if we need apartments, so be it. Let them build somewhere else. Why does Sheboygan have to give up its historical buildings and sacrifice a great, viable community space? Let them build somewhere else, leave our armory alone. We have worked to put together an amazing amount of information for the city's consideration, not because we were desperate or sentimental. Our group is striving for something more than that, opportunity and enrichment. The people on our board have shown that they have Sheboygan's best interests at heart and are willing to put our time and energy into this cause. The question is, do the people on this council have the same intention? Let's make this a unanimous vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go on to our presentations. So we've made arrangements uh, to offer both Scott Crawford and the Armory Community 1 .5, Project. 1.5, Your Honor. The mayor confirmation. That's a confirmation of the Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Back up. 1.5 is confirmation of mayor's appointments. City attorney. There is one appointment. Uh, the mayor hereby submits the following appointment for your consideration. Andy Ross to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Pete Fullerton, whose term expires April 25, 2021. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the confirmation, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Next, we'll go on to presentations. We've made arrangements for both Scott Crawford and the Armory Project, Community Project. They have 15 minutes each to give us a, a background and presentation of their proposals. Uh, Scott Crawford will begin. Here's the uh, advancer. Thank you very much, and you'll have 15 minutes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Once again, my name is Q Elamin, and I'm here with Scott Crawford Incorporated uh, presenting our proposal uh, for the redevelopment of the armory site. So a lot of people say, why the armory site? What's the attraction? Uh, it's threefold. One is, of course, the location. We all know that its proximity to the harbor and also Lake Michigan makes it a prime location for anyone to want to live at. The second is economic growth. The DWD, Department of Workforce Development, 
presented that 700 new jobs were added to Sheboygan County, but Sheboygan County saw a population loss. So how do we attract and also retain the people who want to live and work in Sheboygan? And the third is a world-class city. I've been traveling to Sheboygan for two years uh, personally, and I love all the amenities that are here, along with the art museum, the, of course, the bathrooms that are in there. Then you also have uh, up at Kohler, uh, and you just have a lot of great amenities. So how do we build housing that supports uh, those amenities? So again, we're gonna kind of address uh, some key points tonight, and I'm gonna bring up uh, the team of people that I'm working with on the project to also explain uh, their roles in the process. I also wanted to uh, present an idea that we're working on. I want to let you guys know that it has never been my focus or aim to do anything that the city of Sheboygan did not want. When I first looked at this site two years ago, the, the feeling of the community was to keep the site. So these were plans that were made two years ago as a, a block rendering of keeping the armory site. So at that time, before the council had voted to, uh, of course, uh, demolish the building, that was my aim. So it's never been my aim to do anything that you guys did not want, and I at least wanted to share that with you guys. Can you raise the microphone a little bit, please? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Is this better? So for my project, uh, what we're looking to do is to create 122 apartment units, 110 of those which are apartments, and then 12 of those which are townhome units. We do have a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units. And in there, we will have some affordable housing, and we will also have housing that is regular uh, market rate housing, which the market will allow. And on the board, you can see the range of uh, rents between the affordable housing and also the market rate housing. If I can get the clicker to work. Not. It's not coming up at all. Just went down. So to keep everything uh, moving on, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up my uh, co-developer, Chris Laurent, to give a little bit of background about himself and uh, his experience in development. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Laurent. I work for a company called Sinair. We are a community development financial institution based in Lansing, Michigan. I wear two hats with the company. I invest in affordable housing throughout uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota. And I'm president of our development arm, which is called Sinair Solutions. Um, as Q alluded uh, to, uh, I have a history that involves some work actually here in Sheboygan. I worked for the Housing Finance Agency uh, to, to work on Garden Toy Factory. We provided the, the tax credits at the time. Um, and much of my career we've spent uh, preserving uh, affordable housing, uh, preserving existing buildings. Um, in fact, uh, Sinair Solutions right now is working, uh, just wrapping up a development in Detroit, um, which is uh, on the National Register of Historic Places, and we're about halfway through construction in Monroe, Michigan, which is about halfway between Detroit and, and um, Toledo. Um, so we certainly respect uh, wherever the community wants us to go. And right now, um, I guess we're following the previous decision, which was to take the armory down. From a broad brush perspective, we think it's a great uh, development. Uh, I think um, folks have, have asked about Q's background, and um, he and I met about two years ago, he uh, was a student in a class that I teach called ACRE, uh, which is uh, Associates in Commercial Real Estate. And I was um, really, uh, I guess, impressed with his presence and ability to um, bring good teams together. And he's done that uh, with our architectural team, led by Mark Ernst at Engberg Anderson. Mark and I have worked together. Um, uh, and, and uh, Greenfire would be a new relationship with us as a developer or as the uh, general contractor. And then team management manages a number of properties that we have in our portfolio. So 
part of what a developer does really is brings together really talented folks and leverages those talents and skills to make things happen. Um, and so what Q has asked us to do is provide financial support, potentially through the purchase of credits, uh, but then also to offer development expertise. So I have about 25 years of development expertise working for a number of different firms, uh, and collectively we have the financial backing of a $3.7 billion organization, again, ba based in Lansing. I office in Madison. I uh, told folks at the Finance Committee last week that last year I half-heartedly tried to camp at uh, Kohler Andre, but we got rained out, so I looked for fun activities here in Sheboygan. Um, but we see this as a major opportunity, I think, to enhance the city, sort of piling on with what your economic development director had said, uh, really creating compelling places for people to live with easy access to downtown in a real uh, sort of fresh and innovative housing type that, that uh, Certainly, if it exists here, isn't uh, as modern or up to speed uh, as it could be. Q, did you have more you wanted to add? So I really just want to point out uh, one more item as I go through. I think it froze again. Yeah as I go through uh, the process, but I really wanted to give a profile, which you have been seeing, of a person that would lived in the affordable housing unit on the site. And I looked up a couple different jobs, and one of them was an engineering technician at Aerotech who would make uh, $18 an hour. So that person, if they had a wife and also uh, a small child, would be able to live in an affordable housing uh, unit which would be about $1,000 a month for them and, the, and their small child. So these are workforce units for people uh, who make moderate incomes. So I really want to point that out. And another thing uh, in conclusion I want to say is that we will be providing a large uh, property tax as uh, Dana alluded to, so right around $360,000 is what uh, the property tax will be each year. So it will be a good financial uh, boost uh, to the, the, the city of Sheboygan and uh, also the county. And I'm sorry you couldn't see the presentation in this entirety. And so I guess if we can't take, uh, are you doing questions? No, there's no questions no allowed. Okay. Thank you. Is that the end of your presentation? Yeah, we can't. He, he's just going to get it back here. Go ahead and advance it. So again, I really want to call Mark Ernst up if we have a couple a couple minutes uh, to speak about the design of the building. Sure. Could you go back to one slide? Because I just want to. Introduce myself first, uh, Mark Ernst. I am the president of uh, Angler Anderson Architects. Uh, we have um, designed more housing downtown in Milwaukee than any other firm over the last 10, 15 years, and it's been uh, it's really a pleasure um, and uh, an honor to work with Q. Uh, I'll just say, Q and I went to South Africa two years ago <coughs> as part of a delegation. Milwaukee is a sister city in South Africa, so we, I've got to know him pretty well, and I think he's a rising star in the community. But reflecting on um, the choice you have, um, a lot of our projects, North End in Milwaukee, the River Heath project in uh, Appleton, were both designed and built on um, sites of paper mills and historic buildings and the cities grow and change and I think that's part of the, the question here tonight but the thing we're excited about this opportunity is bringing people down to the water and being and people living um, in the community and what's driving a lot of cities 
the success of cities, um, small and large, is people living downtown. And that's what's driving. There was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, people were building shopping malls downtown. But really driving the success of cities is the housing. So we've, we've taken a quick look at, by no means do we think this is the final design. We think the uh, pro forma works, um, but what we did is a, a larger building that faces the lake, um, that enjoys the views of the lake, and then we've also um, designed townhomes that kind of step down to the neighborhood. So we believe, believe this is really our first um, step. We did, working with Q over the last couple of years, we did look at a project that wrapped around the armory and kept the armory, but um, things have changed and that's where we are today. So we're really open to a process of um, developing the design further and listening to the input of the community as we move forward. And as we go, go through, uh, Greenfire will be the contractor on the project. And these are some of the projects that they completed. And so uh, we're going to let Tom just speak very quickly to uh, Greenfire's expertise. Thank you, Q. Uh, my name is Tom Heinrich. I'm with Greenfire Management Services. We're a construction management firm out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, a large part of the work that we do is multifamily development. Uh, this type of project fits in very well with what we do. We have a lot of experience in it. The company was started about 2010. Uh, we're wholly owned by the Potawatomi Business Development Corporation, which is the Pot Forest County Potawatomi mm -hmm. Tribe. Uh, we have a strong financial backing. We have over $75 million worth of, of bondability. Um, since 2010, we've put in place about over 2,000 2, apartment units, totaling well over $200 million. Um, annual revenues are uh, over $60 million. Next year, we're looking at about $80 million of the revenue. Um, we are a strict or a straight construction manager. What that means is when we go into and we're part of a project like this in a community, we, uh, we don't self-perform any of the work, which means that we have the opportunity to work with local subcontractors, local workforce, and that's a huge part of, uh, of what we do when we go into a community. We, we create relationships with those people and, and we really try to work with communities that we're not necessarily from. Um, again, uh, you know, um, this type of project really falls into our wheelhouse, and, and uh, while we haven't worked with Q on a project, we've worked with Engberg Anderson on um, significant, a significant number of projects and are well suited to, uh, to be able to bring this to fruition. Thank you. Q, you have about a minute to wrap up then? So in conclusion, I would like to uh, lastly just thank you guys again for the opportunity to present um, our proposal. It's been a great process uh, these last two years working in Sheboygan, and whichever decision uh, you choose, I know Sheboygan will be successful. So thank you guys. Thank you very much. Next, we'll call up the Armory Community Project. Please proceed. All right, hello. I'm Jennifer Lurkey from the Armory, president of the Armory Community Project. Since we last spoke to council, we've submitted over 600 pages of information to you, and I hope you've taken the time to read every single page of it. Um, we've adopted our bylaws. Our articles of incorporation have been endorsed by the Wisconsin Department of Financial Institutions. We've adopted a conflict of interest policy. We've received an employer identification number from the IRS. We've got, begun research for and discussion with the Wisconsin Historical Society regarding the National Register of Historic Places. 
The building is certainly eligible at a statewide level of significance, but perhaps at a national level of significance, which is incredibly rare. Um, it, excuse me, eligible at this level for its association with the history of recreation and entertainment for its role in the history of professional basketball and the formation of the NBA, but also as the location for the first racially integrated game in all of professional sports on November 25th, 1942. We believe we've sufficiently answered all of your concerns about the ramifications of National Register listing, too, but if you have any more, feel free to ask them later. I'm available for that. We've received an opinion from Baker Tilly that the project will qualify and is eligible for federal new market tax credits. We've begun talks for a major gift commitment and have enrolled in and qualified for Focus on Energy's Design Assistance Program, which offers up to $400,000 per customer per calendar year in incentives. We have obtained letters from three financial institutions who are interested in purchasing or brokering our 4.6 million in historic and new market tax credits. We fleshed out our business plan and are happy with the staff's assessment that the income, expenses, and programming appear to be solid. An adjunct professor of nonprofit management at Lakeland University has also reviewed our plan and we appear to be on the right track. If anything, we've been told that many of our expense assumptions are a bit too high. We've had meetings with dozens and dozens of people. We have two experienced restaurateurs that are interested in the cafe, two experienced restaurateurs who are interested in the pub. We've talked to local caterers about the kitchen. We've talked to concert promoters, organizations that wish to have conferences there, crafters and makers who are interested in participating in craft shows and maker markets. We've talked to several executive directors of local nonprofits about salaries and wages and makeup of staff. We've talked to several local groups that want to have events there. We continue to collect signatures on paper and electronic petitions, and we've got over 900 of them that we shared with you today. We completed an exhaustive utility cost study. We've prepared a unique programming guide to showcase the types of events the Armory Community Project plans to host to ensure a self-sustaining operation, but also to differentiate from local organizations, and also to show you that we can't have them at North and South High. This programming guide did not include facility rentals for things like conferences, community events, and weddings. That programming guide, I need to repeat, was strictly for the things we would plan to have ourselves as the Armory Community Project. There's a whole myriad of other things that could happen in that building and will happen in that building. We also completed a thorough transportation and parking plan. As far as our redevelopment agreement, I want to highlight a few key points in there. The Armory Community Project waived our request for the remainder of the demolition funds. Our initial plan, we had requested the remainder of those funds. We have waived that. We no longer want them. We didn't take them into account in our sources and uses. We've agreed to compensate the city for the certified survey map. We've agreed to an annual pilot payment of $10,000. We've also come to an agreement on the reversionary clause. Army Community Project shall have um, also, I wanted to point out uh, some key dates and deadlines because there are many, many of them in there. There are many opportunities for you guys to take the building away from us if we don't succeed. Um, the biggest ones, obviously, we need to receive major gift commitments of 1.5 million within 120 days and an additional 900,000 within 180 days. Including the tax credits, we shall have obtained a total of $7 million in 240 days. If we fail to do so, the city has the right to terminate the agreement. Of the $7 million, $5.9 million is for the construction of equipment, a $1 million is for an endowment, and $100,000 is for startup working capital. We've not officially started our campaign yet, and we feel it would be foolish to do so until we have some sort of an agreement from you guys. As far as our experience, the Armory Community Projects Board of Directors has over 172 years of nonprofit experience, sitting on the boards of numerous local organizations, as well as several statewide, regional, and national organizations, serving all roles from just a director all the way up to president. We understand how nonprofits operate. 
The Armory Community Project's Board of Directors has written 11 business plans, and we've run 18 businesses in Wisconsin, New York, and Mexico. We understand how businesses operate, and we know that the best nonprofits are run like businesses. Members of our design and construction team have secured 15.5 million in federal and state historic tax credits for their clients in the last four years alone. They've closed over 295 million in new market tax credits, and our general contractor alone has 115, 119 years of experience. Our team is primarily local. In typical historic preservation projects, between 60 and 70% of the total cost goes towards labor. This has a very practical effect on the local economy because money spent local stays local, and it further expands our project's value and economic impact in the community. <laughs> so I want to thank um, Dean, Seen, Dane Chekolinski for citing 14-year-old voting data, but I want to cite some more current information. The community is speaking loud and clear about this project. In a recent online poll on nextdoor.com, 60% of residents wanted the city to support a proposal that will remodel and continue to use the armory. That was 300 of either, depending on where you get your source from, 24 possible, 2,400 possible respondents or 3,500 possible respondents. In either case, that was an 8.6 to a 12.2% response rate. That's a pretty amazing response rate. In a recent online poll on mysheboygan.com, 78% of residents thought the armory should be remodeled and reopened to the public. That one had a 1.5% response rate. And most recently, in the results of the city's 2018 community survey, which was touted for its exceptional response rate at 3% of adult residents, the armory was mentioned in 22 point, excuse me, 20.2 percent of the responses regarding critical projects and potential new initiatives for implementation in 2019 and 2020. Now, I scoured through all of those myself last week. Of those responses, 69.2 percent were in favor of preserving the building. 22.6 were in favor of demolishing the building. And 8.2 just mentioned the building didn't say one way or another what they wanted, but they urged the city to make a decision. The public has spoken time and time again over the last several months, overwhelmingly in favor of repurposing this building, and you, as the elected officials of this community, need to listen. Now I want to talk a little bit about tax and economic impact. The city's already spent $160,000 on lead and asbestos abatement at the armory. And Gorman's plan calls for $600,000. And if you guys have questions for Gorman, Ted Matcom is here this evening as well. Um, Gorman's plan calls for $600,000 in TIF for a total investment by the city of $760,000. This is a low cost public investment by the city that will spur $12.5 million in private investment. That's a return on investment of $16.45 for every city dollar spent. The other plan before you tonight, with more demolition costs and more TIF incentives, will only return $10.48 back to the city for every dollar spent. Now, what about other impacts? What is the per year impact on our local economy for our project? Well, let's take a look at 40,000 out-of-town visitors per year at the building, which we believe is a conservative estimate, and these are just the out-of-towners. Bookworm Gardens, just as a reference point, hosts over 60,000 visitors a year in 2016, and they're only open for six months of the year. The spending of these visitors will boost our local businesses. Based on figures from Visit Sheboygan, 70% of them will come for the day, and they spend $58 per person, which will generate $1.6 million in economic activity. The remaining 30% will stay overnight, and will spend $180 per person per day, and their average stay is 2.5 days. 
This will generate $5.4 million in economic activity. So we are looking at a total of $7 million in economic activity out of this project. In total, the Armory Community Project's projected tax impacts have been grossly understated. So I've got some new figures for you. We have agreed to a pilot, so payment in lieu of taxes, to the city of $10,000. Gorman and Company will have, if you use the same rates as other projects that are being discussed tonight, about $97,000 a year in property taxes. The pub will also pay property taxes. The for profit, excuse me, for profit portions of the building will be taxed. The cafe will also have property taxes. The pub will pay personal property taxes. And those of you that are business owners understand that there are such a thing as personal property taxes. I get to pay a tax for my conference room table at my office every year. Uh, the cafe will also pay personal property taxes. The pub will pay sales taxes. The cafe will pay sales taxes. There's going to be visitor spending that generates sales taxes. And then, of course, those overnight stays that have room tax associated with them. All in, and I only counted the 0.5% sales tax. We are looking at $233,000, over $233,000 in years 1 through 10 of taxes paid to this city. Not just 100,000, 233,000. Multifaceted from a variety of different sources that will go to a variety of different departments in the city and will pay for a variety of different things. Most importantly, the sales taxes which go towards our roads. Scott Crawford's plan in years one through 10 is only paying $175,000 in taxes. We have a net gain of nearly $60,000 in years one through 10 with our plan. So you tell me which one generates more taxes. It's gonna take their plan 18 and a half years to catch up to ours. So if this comes down to property tax base, we win. These figures don't even take into account state sales tax, federal and state income tax of the Armory Community Project, the pub or the cafe employees. Many have asked us to consider building elsewhere. First, we wouldn't have the benefit of the historic tax credits and, depending on the location, quite possibly the new market tax credits. In addition, new construction of a similar size facility would cost twice as much. Both of these make that option of building elsewhere financially infeasible. The other option you're voting on tonight has numerous other opportunities to build elsewhere and capitalize on the same financial package of TIF and low-income housing tax credit incentives. Can go anywhere. Ours can't. We don't have that option. Our financial package only works with this building on this site. Give us a chance to prove it to you. We're offering something better for our community, something to attract millennials, something to give our younger residents a reason to stay or return after they've been away to college, and some, somewhat of an incentive to get new hires to relocate here. We believe our multifaceted business plan is the best choice for the citizens of Sheboygan, and we ask for your vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. <clears throat> Next is Mayor's announcements. Uh, we've just completed a historic election, one in which uh, our council is shifting from uh, 16 older persons down to 10. And for the first time in, I'm sure, a half a century or more, we've had the entire council up for re-election at the same time in order to orchestrate this change. And unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to some people that have given a lot of service to this city. So first of all, I'd like to call up Andy Ross. Andy Ross has served for older person for this last year. We want to thank him for his dedicated service. He served on the Finance and Personnel Committee. Andy, thank you so much. Next, I'd like to call up Alderperson Henry Nelson. I would like to thank Henry for one year of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan as Alderperson. Henry served on the Public Works Committee, and he's also served in the past on the Library Board. 
Henry, thank you so much. Next, I'd like to recognize Alderperson Andrew Schneider. Andrew is with us online. I'd like to thank him for two years of dedicated service. He served as on the Public Works Committee as Vice Chairman, the Finance Committee, and the Salary and Grievance Committee during his, his tenure with us. Andrew, thank you very much. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call up Alderperson Roman Drawn. Uh, Roman, uh, came in an in, in, uh, interim role to fill a vacancy, and I'd like to thank him for three years of dedicated service. Roman served as council vice president of the Public Protection and Safety Committee chairman, and also the Law and Licensing Committee vice chairman. Roman, thank you so much for your dedicated service. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call up Alderperson Brian Bitters. Brian uh, is uh, being recognized for four years of dedicated service. During his tenure, he served on the Public Protection and Safety Committee and the Public Works Committee. Brian, thank you so much for your help and service. <laughs> Next one is Alderperson Scott Lewandowski. Scott, we'd like to thank you for four years of dedicated service. Uh, during his time, he served on the Salary and Grievances Committee, the Law and Licensing Committee, and also served as Assistant City Historian. He served from April 17th of 2012 through April 14th of 2014. He had a brief break in service, and then came back in April 19th of 2016 through April 16th of 2018. Scott, thank you so very much. Next, I'd like to call up Alderperson Michael Damro. Michael uh, is given the Certificate of Appreciation and Recognition of four years of dedicated service to the City of Sheboygan. As an Alderperson, Michael served on the Public Protection and Safety Committee as Vice Chairman. His service was from April 15th of 2014 through April 16th of 2018. Thank you very much, Mike. Next, I'd like to call up Alderperson Susan Holshu. Susan is being honored for six years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan. During this time, she served in the Law and Licensing Committee, most recently as chairman, the Public Protection and Safety Committee as vice chairman, and also the Public Safety Committee. That's from April 17th of 2012 through April 16th of 2018. Susan, thank you so very much for your service. And lastly, I'd like to uh, recognize Alderperson John Bellinger, who isn't with us today, but we'll pass this on to him for six years of dedicated service. As an Alderperson, during this time, he served as Council Vice President, Public Works Committee Chairman, Finance Committee Vice Chairman, and he also served on the Public Protection and Safety Committee. John, thank you for your service as well. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing. It's item 2.1, hearing number 17 of 1718 for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements on South 13th Street and Henry Street from Broadway Avenue to Mead Avenue. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? John, we've got a certificate for you for your years of service, six years, dedicated service, serving as council vice president, public works committee chair, finance committee vice chair, and public protection and safety. Thank you so much, John.
Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.1 through 3.17. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ryan? Aye. Okay, thank you. Shoot. John, did you want to? It never came up. It never came up, yep. Yeah. It's all coming up. Do you, what do you vote, John? Popped up for I know. I can vote. It, okay. Just vote again. Yeah. Just vote again, please. Do we vote again? Did yes, please. Say? Yes, please. John, what do you vote, please? It didn't come up again. What do you it vote? It came up for me. It did? Yeah. It's saying 15. I. Okay. All right. So 16 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to uh, reports of officers. Items 4.1 through 4.4 will be referred to committees of the new council. Under resolutions, items 5.1 and 5.2 will be referred to the Public Works Committee of the New Council. And um, under reports of committees, Alderperson Savaglio, did you have a question? Yes, I make a request to the chair to move item 6.10 before 6.9, please. Second. Can we wait till, wait till we get to that part of the, let's see. So you want to move 6.10 to where? To before 6.9. Vote on the other ones first, right? No, we're just uh, referred. Okay. Okay. Okay, there's been a motion to um, move 6.10. Um, you can make a decision on your own if you so choose. If you... If you, as the chair, say no, then you can be challenged. Well, I'm being challenged then, so we'll take a vote on the motion to move that item. Would the clerk please call the roll what are we on the change on? of order in the agenda? What are we voting on? This moves the Armory project ahead of the Scott Crawford project vote. Should we vote on 6.1 first? Uh, no, we're, we're it's just it's a procedural motion challenging the chair's uh, decision not to make the change in the agenda order as proposed. It's not uh, it's not a substantive. Vote. Is it a roll vote? Chuck. Um, you should do it by uh, roll call. Yeah. Who, who made the second, please? I did. Thank you. It's 
Scott? Scott? So what are we voting on, 610? You're mo just no. moving the order. You're voting on the challenge. So an I vote would sustain the, um, the request to change the order of the uh, votes, and a no vote uh, would be to stick with the mayor's order. Say that. Right. <laughs> so a nay vote keeps it in the same order. If you vote no, it keeps it as is. Okay. Change. Are you ready? Are we ready for voting? Yeah. It, got is it on not my, on your screen? I've got it on my screen, but it doesn't say that. It says moving 6.10 to 6.9. Doesn't say that. Oh, it doesn't say, doesn't say that? that? No. What does it say? It says 6.10. It says we're just voting on 6.10. Motion 6.10 to 6.9. <laughs> down the okay. bottom it does. All the way down. You, do you see it, Marcus, or not? It says motion 6.10 to 6.9 right. on the bottom. Right. Not so it's sure. moving it's motion. My, that's not on my screen. Scroll down. Gotta scroll down. Is it, it says on my screen motion to move 6.10 oh, okay. to 6.9. Everybody no, seen it correctly? Mine just says it's uh, forwarding to council with no recommendation. That's as far as I can scroll down in the little box. Well, Jim, do you want to tell me your vote, or do you uh, want to? I vote nay. Okay. Twelve eyes, four noes. Motion passes. So we're going to go on with 6.1, and then we'll make that change when we get to 6.10 or 9 on the agenda. Item 6.1 is RC number 318 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred resolution number 166 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf submitting a preliminary resolution declaring intent to exercise police power to levy special assessments for the construction of a sidewalk on Washington Avenue from South Business Drive to 960 feet to the west and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a Motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ron? Aye. Okay. Couldn't show up though. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 319 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred resolution number 167 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Clunk Masonry LLC for the 2018 sidewalk program and the Washington Avenue sidewalk for $142,639.50 and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I need to abstain on this vote. Uh, Clunk Mason area is doing a project for my wife and I this summer on our driveway. So under the circumstances, 
I don't feel comfortable voting on this contract, so I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Thank you for that notice. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes, one abstain. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 320 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred resolution number 169 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Rupert Milkey for site inspections, grading testing, and lab work at the South Point Enterprise campus for $878,762. And recommends that the passing uh, recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 321 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred resolution number 170 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Vinton Construction Company for the amount of $1,250,132.35 ATC transmission for the amount of $157,000 and Miller Engineers and Scientists for the amount of $4,000 for the Taylor Drive reconstruction and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is RC number 1, 322 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Tuma's referred resolution number 171 of 1718 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne, providing for the sale of general obligation promissory notes and note anticipation notes for 2018 capital projects and recommends passing the substitute resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the uh, substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 is RC number 323 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred resolution number 172 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf declaring the official intent to reimburse expenditures from the proceeds of borrowing and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt 
can pass the resolution. Is there a second? Second. All those, is there any a discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.7 is RC number 324 of 1718 by Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 176 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue and Boren authorizing the purchase of approximately 0.3 acres of land and building located in the northern portion of 1211 North 23rd Street for future use by the city and recommends passing the resolution. Alder person Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. On this Second. one, I think uh, we've had some serious changes in the okay. documents, so I think what's appropriate here is a motion to file this document because we have to clear it out at the end of the council year. And then, uh, therefore, I move to file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nice. Motion passes. Item 6.8 is RC number 325 of 1718 by Finance and Personnel. Humor's referred resolution number 174 of 1718 by all the person Sorensen resolving that if the Common Council fails to make a decision regarding the armory by April 16th of 2018, the city of Sheboygan shall have a citywide non-binding referendum to decide the future of the armory and recommends filing the document. Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I was the one that presented this resolution regarding an, uh, a referendum to discuss the future of the armory for several reasons, and I stated it in several meetings, because um, I think it was back in February or March that we had our last committee, the, well, last committee, the whole meeting, where I first proposed this idea. Um, the, the, the origin of this really kind of came from my frustration, I think other frustrations from council members, uh, just kind of with the passing the hot potato, passing the skunk, whatever an analogy you want to use regarding the, the process moving forward with the armory. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to some extent that we are here tonight to make a decision regarding the armory. I hope we make one decision from the armory, the armory, and I do appreciate and want to thank uh, Chuck um, and his team in the city attorney's office for proposing um, some of the considerations for the referendum if it would pass um, tonight. But uh, I, I do appreciate um, all the work that has been put in on this from council members, committee members, uh, city attorney, city administrator, and the mayor. Um, I'm not entirely satisfied with the recommendation from the committee but I, I do respectfully accept it. So I just encourage that the council makes a decision tonight uh, one way or another. Otherwise, this may or may not be brought up in the new session. Did you care to make a, a, a motion on the document? No. Alder person Donahue. Thank you. Uh, in light of that really eloquent uh, disposition, I uh, move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Other person holds you. I'm just wondering what we need, if we could just move it to after 6.11 and make a decision, or is, are we unable to do that? It's on the floor now. I'll second that. I would prefer to move it to after 6.11. I make a motion to move document 6.7 to 6. 6.8. So it's not a motion, but it's a request to the chair, and then the chair will decide, and then you can challenge the chair if you don't like his decision, just like we did with the other one. Thank you. The chair will accept the motion. We'll put this aside. Thank you. Uh, next item will be uh, 6.10, RC number 327 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Tumors referred resolution number 175 of 1718 
May all the persons not a human born approving the terms and conditions of the redevelopment agreement between the Armory Community Project, Inc. and the City of Sheboygan for a project involving rehabilitating the municipal armory and auditorium and repurposing them into a community center and recommends forwarding to council with no recommendation. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. With uh, uh, the uh, fact that finance and personnel uh, were uh, deadlocked with respect to the vote here at 2-2, uh, to have the matter set on for discussion before the body, I would uh, move to accept uh, and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Sorensen. Okay, so I, I just want to make a few comments um, since we're discussing the Armory Community Project first. Um, I was, was a little upset and frustrated again with, with the process moving along with the committee. I think it was a little goofy process uh, that the committee did not make a recommendation for either one. Um, I think it's also kind of ludicrous that 6.11 was brought forward as well. So I want to ex express my frustration from that. Um, no offense to anyone that has brought that forward, but I do think that, we, you know, it, it was a third, fourth maybe option that, that came forward, and after all the work that the RFP committee put together, all the work that city staff put together, I think that was a little, um, a little unnecessary in my case. But anyways, I'm going to go into kind of my, my stump um, and, and, and uh, call for my support for 6.10. I really think that this is a generous uh, genesis moment right now for the city of Sheboygan. Um, back in 1940, uh, August 19th, many, many years ago, before I was even born, um, <laughs> the, the city council, the Sheboygan city council uh, approves plans to build the Sheboygan Armory, to move forward with that. And in, in April 16th, 2018, it's up to us the 16 members of this council to make a decision. I do want to applaud all the people that have shown their support. I'm always, I always get excited when they're standing room only and we got an overflow room. I think it really shows and it's uh, very emblematic of the dedication of the civic participation of the citizens of Sheboygan. So I want to thank everyone that has come forward, whether they're for the armory or against the armory. I want to thank everyone for that. I think it's, and I'm speaking kind of as a millennial from this perspective because there's only two of us on the council. So I think someone's got to kind of talk that up a little bit. And so I do, I do applaud the speakers that have brought forward the, the opinions from the millennials. Um, but I, I do think that is important in our community that we do have a large scale civic center that brings our community together. Because I think especially in, in the times that we live right now in our country, it's very divided. And I think that this has been a, a prime example of that has brought the community together. If you look out in the audience, if you look out at the people that have spoken, many different ages, um, many different generations, men, women, Democrats, Republicans, people coming together. Folks from the city of Sheboygan, from surrounding county, counties. I know some aldermen probably have gotten emails and phone calls from uh, residents around Wisconsin on this and, and regionally. Um, so I, I really think that this is a unique opportunity in doing my research as a council member, being one of the newer members on the council, uh, I, was, I was watching and reading through some old discussion uh, regarding the armory, and I think it was, a lot of the discussion kind of was framed around, oh, it would be great if we could save the armory, but we don't have a complete plan together. We don't, we don't have a proposal to save the armory or to utilize it. And I think today we really have a, a, a plan. People have said that this one is risky, then it's a gamble. But Alders and other folks have said that, that the same thing about the other proposal tonight. So, so I think Sheboygan, uh, you know, we're, we're going to take, take a big leap on the, on the decision that we make. And I'm confident in the vote that I'll take tonight because there is only one armory. This armory was a WPA project. I think that there is a historical significance to this. I think, you know, as Americans, you know, we need to embrace our culture and our, hist our historical buildings because it is part of who we are. It is part of the fabric of our community. I was doing some research too before, um, and, and I think it's very interesting just kind of the events and people that have walked through the armory. And I'd like to see kind of that, but in the 21st century um, process. And just listening through some of the, the, the events and people that have, have spoken and came through the armory. Alice Cooper performed there. My dad was at that concert. Someone, uh, someone named Johnny Cash spoke there. <laughs> Bob Hope, 
REO Speedwagon, uh, the Harlem Go Globetrotters, <coughs> Armistice Day celebrations. There were several <coughs> large UAW meetings from both, both Kohler and Volrath. Some folks remember uh, when we had an NBA team, uh, the Sheboygan Redskin games, Jehovah Witness conventions, the U.S. Marine bands, dog shows, wrestling events, battles of the band, and of course, polka festivals. There's also been a lot of notable civic leaders that have walked through the armory. President John F. Kennedy spoke there, Vice President Hubert Humphrey, Jesse Jackson, George Wallace, um, and as well as Senator William Proxmire held several Get Out the Vote events. Those were just some of the notable names that stuck out to me. There's plenty of lists uh, um, dating other older people that I wasn't quite familiar with. Um, and of course, can't forget the South North Games that were played at the, at, at the Sheboygan Armory, a neutral ground that brought the city together. And I think that we have this great opportunity um, to, to bring our community together. I have no ill will against Scott Crawford and, and, and their group plan put together. I do think Sheboygan needs more apartments, more housing, diversify the, the housing stock. But there are other lands. There's other lands out there. There's only one armory. So I'm, I'm voting in favor of the, the armory community project. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. <laughs> well, I rise to, uh, to defend the Finance and Personnel Committee. The reason there was no recommendation for either proposal is two voted for and two voted against. So decisions were made, and that was the from your millennial perspective, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that oh, I do. That people did make decisions and that was the outcome. Um, and since I'm standing up, um, in a way I wish this were, the armor proposal were a bad one like other ones that we've had in the past. It's not. I have complimented uh, quite sincerely the people who have been involved in Dane talking about how much time he has spent. I, it's clear that a huge amount of time has been spent on this proposal. It's been a really hard decision for me. Um, I have rejected um, the um, fairly nasty approach that we had to the Scott Crawford Company. Um, I think it's a viable project. I just don't like it, and um, I think that the company is fully capable of carrying it out, but um, I don't have any concerns in that respect, and it's crystal clear to me that if we're going to fill 3,000 jobs in this city and in this county and in this region, we're going to need more housing. I mean, there's just no question about it. So, but I can't dismiss the Armory Project out of hand because it is well documented, well thought out. I think that there is a possibility that, a good possibility, that the money will be raised to make the renovations. Um, <clears throat> and I think that is all well and good. Looking over the proposal, um, I, I just have to say that the business plan is exceedingly optimistic, astonishingly optimistic. Uh, there is a large profit pr forecast for the end of the first year in a vastly undercapitalized project. So it's one thing to you know build the stage for the show and then another thing to make the show a success. That being said, there is a lot of energy, and the folks in this room who are applauding and clapping and are so energetic, you will need to step up because this project is going to need an enormous amount of support from this community. And, <clears throat> and not only in having a broth fry here and there or a craft show or whatever, but you, you will need to devote your time and your talents to this and also your treasure. This has got to be a community call to Sheboygan to open up their pocketbooks because it's going to cost a lot of money for a long time in order to make this project work. That being said, I think it could happen. My concern is what happens to the city if it doesn't? And I think that needs to be really clear in our minds as alders because that is our primary responsibility. I am pretty convinced that other than the fact that we will continue to gnash our teeth and tear out our hair about the project that should it fail, I think the city ha does not have much to lose. Um, uh, you know, if, if the project doesn't, if, if the business plan doesn't work, there may be another entity that comes in and operates. That was certainly the model at Blue Harbor. We're on our third uh, uh, <coughs> owners and operators there. Um, we will need to protect parking for that neighborhood. 
Um, the parking plan, again, is extremely optimistic and is really, I think as a city, we're going to be needing to deal with protecting the parking places for all of those people in those neighborhoods who have no other place to park. And for if we have the number of events that they're talking about, there are going to be many times when those folks don't have a place to park. Um, <clears throat> I think eventually we can get the, the, the property back. We've, we'll get a dollar for it uh, from the Armory Project. We've already spent a substantial amount of money in terms of asbestos and, and, and lead remediation, but we would have had to do that anyway. So as I balance it out, um, I do wish the Armory Project and the citizens of Sheboygan who are in favor of it, many are not, but many are, just like the Finance Committee. You know, It's not that we don't have a recommendation, it's just we have different opinions about it. So I'm gonna vote for the Armory Project because I think that hopefully there is enough energy and enough money to make this work. Uh, and if it doesn't, I think the harm to the city is going to be quite small, and therefore I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable going ahead and voting for it. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Duran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've been on the fence with this entire process from the beginning, primarily because I wanted to keep an open mind. Um, there are many things that we've learned through this process, and I think that uh, the Armory Group has really answered uh, the questions that were on the table before them. A couple of the big questions that I have have been answered. First of all, structurally, the building itself, is it safe? Is it actually something we can actually use? And uh, I, I did have a chance to speak with Reed Schmidt, and I know that Steve Schmidt has taken a, a tour and gone through that building. And this is a WPA project, and, and it is built very, very, I'm not going to use the, the phrase, but it's built very well. It's a brick house. It's a brick house. <laughs> and I, I started to realize that most of the things that I own tend to be things that are repurposed in some form or fashion. I have a very old house from the 1800s. I have a very old truck from I won't say when. I have an old motorcycle. I have an old uh, uh, business that I purchased. And I like fixing things up and, and bringing new life to them. And I see that process, the potential in the armory. And it is not a disservice or, or anything against Scott Crawford. In, in his group, I think they've done an excellent job under any other circumstances, a fantastic opportunity. But I also think that the Armory Project is, a, is something that can help us reconnect uh, with our past and also move things to the future. And the last thing that I'll say is the financial aspect was the one thing that was really holding me up. More on the operational side, not getting the initial funding. I know how much it costs to run a business, and I know that every time you think you're going to spend 3,000 bucks, you're spending 6,000. That's just how it goes. A thousand, a hundred thousand to me didn't seem like enough to make this happen for a year. I was a little concerned about that. However, I've spoken to people that I trust on their word. I know you can't take that to the bank. There will be people that will be coming forward with finance, with support, with the passion that this community is often seen behind things of this nature. It's been so political and so difficult for people to uh, put their name into the hat. I understand that, and I wouldn't blame anybody for, for holding back until they know what's happening. So I'll be voting in favor of this, and I do want to thank everybody who's put all the time and the work and the effort in this, including the citizens. And it's awesome to see how many people have become engaged and, and process-wise getting into what we're doing. We need more of that from our community. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Nelson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, fortunately, uh, Alder Donahue has uh, expressed most of the thoughts that uh, I had concerning uh, the Armory, but in a far more eloquent manner than I probably would have, and so I, uh, that's all I have to say at this point. Thank you. Uh, next is Alderperson Trester. I, too, need to speak for the people of Sheboygan and say we need to keep this Armory. But there's also another aspect to this. The Armory Project people are young people, and they represent the youth of our city. And perhaps giving them the opportunity to be entrepreneurs and to get this thing running and bringing the city together, the young and the old together. I find it exciting. I find it invigorating, and I think it's going to give a shot in the arm to other young 
entrepreneurs in our city to come forward and take that step to start businesses here. And to all the people that called me on the phone and said, save the armory, God bless you, and thank you for stepping up and giving us a shot in the arm so that we know how to vote for you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this has been, like many most recent projects that we've had going on, um, very difficult for, for all of us to, to, to look at, review, and digest. And I applaud everybody that's been working on this project for the Armory. Um, it's amazing what has been done in such a short period of time. We've talked about giving more time. We've talked about, you know, more data, more points to look at things, the business plan. Although, my, like myself, like um, Mary Lynn had said earlier, I'm very concerned about a lot of the details, the devil's in the details. And unfortunately, Dane, you, you, did, a, you did a great job um, expressing your exposure to the uh, small business group. It's true. You know, the, the entrepreneur, um, their biggest asset is what? It's, it's the vision. It's the, it's the knowledge. It's, it's, the, it's the drive and desire of a project. So what we see tonight is a perfect example of what we need to see moving forward. If this project is going to have the passion and success, then we need this all to continue. And like Mary Lynn had said before, you guys are just starting. You're, get, you, you're rolling up your sleeves today. You're going to get dirty tomorrow. You've you got to keep pushing and pressing. And if that's what the community wants, then that's what we want as a council, in my opinion. Because what, what is successful is what the community wants and believes in. Now, I, I have said since the beginning that I'm on the fence. I will say that again. Why am I on the fence? Because I look at what's best for the city, what's best for, for us to prosper, not just today, but in the future. And those are difficult decisions. And that's why you vote um, this group in position, is to make those hard decisions so that we don't have to do a referendum. <laughs> But the thing is that we continue to hear it, either for or against. And it's very difficult because I pride myself on every phone call that I get keeping a tally because that's what I'm, I'm here for. And it's been very, very difficult. You have so many people that are emotionally connected. You have so many people that um, hear about things and they just, you know, they go with the flow. And then you have those that are just, they don't, want, they don't really care about the details. It just get something done. Keep her moving. So, you know, the thing that we have to worry about here is what's best for the city. And what's best for the city, even though I don't necessarily agree with the numbers, and I, you know, I hope to see you guys successful, we really have to see this drive and desire that you have today and that you've had for the last months, six months. I've seen more activity in these few months than we have in years with all the other projects. We haven't seen that drive, that desire. So the only way this is going to be successful, and that's why we have, I believe, a, you know, certain pieces in place, like Marilyn had said, so that you know, the only thing we're really going to lose is time. Um, I hope that you guys are successful. And I, I, you know, if this is what you guys want, then that's, that's the direction that we're going to have to look at. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Lewandowski. Yes, I'm in support of saving the armory. And I think that this is a good idea to fix up the armory and turn it into a community center again. And I think that if we don't do it, Sheboygan is going to need to build a community center in a few years and start from scratch. And it's going to cost a lot more money to the people of Sheboygan. And I'm glad to see that so many people of Sheboygan are behind this project. And I think it's going to be a good project and successful. Thank you for those comments. Well, the lights are all out. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I'm one of the numbers guys on the council, uh, serving on the vice chair of the Finance and Personnel Committee. And uh, the thing that I like about the Crawford project is that of the three, $360,000 that eventually the city is going to receive, and I want to equate that 
into what that means for, for employees for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, with that $360,000 that we're uh, eventually going to get, that would fund five firefighter paramedics. A new firefighter paramedic in the city of Sheboygan costs $73,000. And uh, that, that assumes a family health plan. That $360,000 would also fund five police officers at $70,000 each, assuming a family medical plan. That would also fund seven DPW workers at $50,000 each, assuming a family medical plan. Our IT director at, at recent finance meetings has made a very, very good case for uh, hiring two or three more people uh, in the IT department. That $360,000 would certainly fund two and possibly three, depending on the skill level. Uh, every time we give our city employees a cost of living increase of 2%, uh, that adds, and I might add that those are uh, merit-based increases. Not everybody gets them. And the employees that get those raises certainly deserve them. But every time we give a 2% increase in pay to our employees, that adds $500,000 to our budget every year. Many of you may not be aware that state government has frozen our ability to levy property taxes except for growth for many years. So my question is, where is this money going to come from if we need more firefighter paramedics? We have a study going on right now with the fire department that may come through asking us to hire more firefighter paramedics or other positions in the fire department. We have a heroin and opioid crisis in Sheboygan right now. We may need to hire more police officers. The ones we're doing, the ones that we have now are spread very, very thin. Our DPW workers, we used to have 200 employees in the Department of Public Works. Now we have about 100. <coughs> Dave Beeble and his staff are magicians for the amount of work that they have, for the amount of work that they get done. They could use more employees. So uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to vote no on the Armory project, and it's mainly it's mainly dollars and cents for me. Uh, I think we need the three hundred and sixty thousand dollars in additional property tax revenue, and we have to we have to be able to fund positions in the city that may come forward. And this additional property tax revenue will go a long way to funding those employees. And I know uh, some of these departments are near and dear to many of these older persons, and we understand the work that they're doing with very limited personnel. And if we need more, where are the dollars going to come from? Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alder person, Ryan Fleisch. Thank you. I will be voting for the Armory proposal as I did in the Finance Committee meeting. Um, However, if we pass this, probably the Crawford issue won't be, won't be discussed any longer. And I did want to point out that I, a lot of the things that Jim mentioned, the Crawford type project could be done in another location. We can't do the armory in another location, which is kind of what convinced me that we need to go forward on the, on the armory proposal. Besides all the good things that Mary Lynn said that they have been answered, all the questions I had have been answered. I am familiar with downtown living. My son and I rent a house, rent an apartment in downtown La Crosse, a development called Bell Square. It's located right downtown. It attracts all sorts of millennials and also attracts a number of baby boomers who are retiring and allowing them to live at some place, you know, close to uh, to the downtown where there is activity where they don't have to drive every place, and some place where there's a little bit of room for grandchildren if you want to come visit. The armory isn't exactly downtown. It's a little bit of a ways and up the hill for a lot of people, my generation at least. I think some spot for the Crawford proposal closer to 8th Street, maybe overlooking you know, something or another would be, it would be a, a good location or other locations that we can do that, that project and beyond. I like that what they came through. They got, a good, they got a good team of people put together in a Crawford proposal. So I hope, even though I'm voting for the Army proposal because I think it's necessary, Crawford doesn't give up on Sheboygan and maybe comes back with something else. Thank you for those comments. Um, I'd like to ask all the, our administrator, Daryl Hofflin, to leave us with some comments. He had to lead the negotiations with both of the groups uh, for the Armory proposal. Daryl, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, my recommendation as a city administrator is for the Common Council to approve uh, agenda item 6.9, the sale of the Armory land to Scott Crawford for the development of an apartment <laughs> complex. This proposal... What's your point? My point is it's the... 
alder person's choice to make tonight not to be swayed by the city administrator or the mayor at the time of council meeting. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. It's the mayor who doesn't interject comments in, in the council meeting. It's okay for I staff to be recognized. City attorney. Well, Mr. Offlin, uh, by ordinance, does have access to the floor. With that, would you please proceed? <coughs> so I recommend approval of the sale of the armory land to Scott Crawford for the development of an apartment complex. This proposal checks off many critical boxes for the community. One check is the development of 122 units. The community is in desperate need of additional housing, not only for existing residents, including residents looking to downsize and remain in the community, but also a new workforce that local businesses are trying to attract. Uh, this need is documented in a recent study as reported by the SCEDC and confirmed by Baker Tilly. Another check is its compatibility of land use. It is surrounded on the north and south by other multifamily developments. The attraction for many of its future residents will, of course, be the close proximity to Lake Michigan. Another check is the development of a significant taxable value. The Scott Crawford development is projected to pay almost $360,000 in annual property taxes this is a significant contribution, not only to the city, but the other local taxing jurisdictions. Through the use of the TIDs, the city will be able to, to leverage these taxes to pay for other projects, including the adjacent terminus of Pennsylvania Avenue at Lake Michigan. The city has already invested tens of millions of dollars in this section of Sheboygan. Nearby public investment is evident in the marina, Deland Park, the Riverwalk, other open spaces, the dredging of the Sheboygan River, redevelopment of South Pier, and the downtown. This investment by the city is now attracting a $24 million project on this redevelopment site. Another check is the economic impact of this project to the downtown area. The nearby downtown continues its revival, but its economic health is fragile. Not unlike many 100-year-old downtown uh, areas, the additional customer base provided by the apartment option will increase the chances that downtown will flourish both short and long term. Potentially 298 residents, consistent with the, two, uh, the last census for the Scott Crawford development, will be spending money day in and day out in the adjacent downtown, riverfront, and South Pier areas. Another check of this proposal is, a, is its affordable housing component. With affordable units renting for $750 to $875, for one and two bedroom apartments respectively, this new housing development will be, attract will be attractive to workforce of many of the local community businesses. It'll be up to the Common Council to determine their comfort with the soundness of the information that has been presented by the two finalists. Scott Crawford proposal was really relatively easy to develop. Based upon similar apartment projects, it's easy to calculate new construction costs easy to calculate cost to operate, easy to calculate availability of tax credits, and easy to calculate how much banks or investors are willing to commit. The team that Scott Crawford put together has included a seasoned architect at Engbert Anderson, financial pa partner at uh, Sanair, and construction managers at Green Fire Management Services, who have a long list of successful development and management of projects. The Scott Crawford proposal also contains a financial letter of interest from TCF Bank. As a city administrator, my advice is often based upon the likelihood of success and the need to minimize risk. Not only is the Scott Crawford proposal sound, but it checks a lot of boxes that are important to our community. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Moving on, Alderperson Trester. I think it's been said at least more than once tonight that the Scott Crawford could build in other locations in the city and not necessarily on the armory site. We have one armory, one opportunity to do this. And I say we give them the opportunity, and I will not vote for Crawford. I will vote for the armory. Thank you for that comment. Is there any other uh, discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Scott. 
I don't have it on my screen again, Meredith. You don't, okay. I didn't come up again. Yeah. Nay. Nay. Okay. All right. It's just technical difficulties tonight. Thirteen eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to item 6.9, RC number 326 of 1718 by finance and personnel. The um, city attorney has reminded me that uh, 6.9 is now moot. And uh, so I'd accept a recommendation or a motion to file. So moved. Second. We have uh, Alderperson Donahue, who is the second? All right, in flesh. Okay, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Uh, we're going to have to vote then. City clerk will set it up for you. The motion to file, correct? Yep. What exactly are we voting on? Motion to file, Voting to file. To file. Correct. Nay. Aye. Okay. Fifteen eyes, one no. A motion to file passes. Next, we're moving on to item 6.8, which is RC number 325. Uh, this is the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution 174 of 1718 by Alderperson Sorensen, resolving that if the Common Council fails to make a decision regarding the armory by April 16th, the city shall have a citywide non-binding referendum uh, and recommends filing the document. Alderperson Donahue. In light of the vote on 610, I move to uh, file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there <coughs> any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, uh, would you please call the roll? Nice. Motion passes. Item uh, 6.11 is RC number 328 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, who's referred resolution number 173 of 1718 by Alderpersons Donahue and Wolf, authorizing the demolition of the Sheboygan Armory, a provision to return the site to its entirety to a green space and allowance for further development opportunities they may present themselves in the future. Uh, this was originally uh, recommending passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, again, in light of uh, the vote on 6.10, I believe this is moot, and I uh, move to file. Second. Thank you for that motion. And who had the second? Alderperson Sorensen. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll?
16 eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.12 through 6.15 will be referred to different uh, committees of the new council. Under other matters, city attorney. 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2018, December 31, 2018, and June 30, 2019. That'll be referred to the licensing and hearings and public safety committee of the new council. Next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub E. Wisconsin uh, competitive bargaining reasons required a closure, uh, closed session regarding redevelopment of the Badger State Tannery, uh, 1031 Mayland Avenue. Uh, for possible sale of land in the Sheboygan Business Center and development opportunity in the South Point Enterprise Campus. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? The clerk call the roll for closed session. Did you vote? Sorry? Did you vote? Uh, Never came up. Okay, what do you vote, please? Nay. What? <laughs> oh. Nay. Nay? Okay. We go, Joe. Fifteen eyes, one no. Okay, we'll be uh, taking a five minute recess and then reconvening at uh, 8.05 in closed session. This will end our broadcast on uh, community cable for today. Thank you very much.